so many exemptions in what you are doing. And the first essential is that you think all the human beings are exactly the same. And I maintain that no two individuals are the same. That is number one. And so the very idea of arriving at the greatest common factor may be self-defeating in its own effect. Right. That is number one. All right, the instruments which you have gather certain data. And uh, what you are doing with the data is the interpretation based upon the knowledge you have. I am just asking questions so that I can better understand what you are talking about. I am not throwing counter questions at you, but really I am not able to follow it. You see. So, uh, the, the whole the thing may be you see, a self-defeating uh, approach to the problem. I am not suggesting that you should give up. No, they are supposed to point. Yes, I know that. Yes. So, because we, we feel that the present normality, which we call normal, belongs to that category that you have said. That means because statistical you normal. Have not, because you have not taken the totality of the, That's the, right. the, the human no, on this planet and the world of the nation, certain experiences and behavior patterns, you put them, you see, as uh, above normal. You may not call them abnormal or any such thing. So they may not be anything other than the normal. May not be. No, our present normality. Because they don't fit into you see, the. No, no, that is the present normality, which I am criticizing. You see, that is the. Yeah, I am with you. That is, what I'm saying. that is the statistical definition right. you have. Now, what we want to, what we want to do is, today our science is suffering from studying similarities and not dissimilarities. But do you do, don't you have any other way of solving your problem other than going to these yogis and those who do these pranayama exercises and those who meditate and those who claim that you see that they are living in some other states and that they are functioning in some other kind of a reality? No, no. So the problems are created by the inadequacy of your own scientific efforts. So you have got to find out the solutions for your own problems within that framework. Maybe you are doing, committing the biggest mistake in going to those people and asking for solutions for your problems. No, no, I mean, no, 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 no. you have to come up, you see, this, your approach has always been an independent one. We have to, these claimants we have, you see, in our midst today, and all those ugly things we have in the marketplace who are selling all and every kind of gimmick may be fooling themselves. You see, you see, the real one, the real Mekai, if there is one, he will never submit himself to all your tests. This is one of the reasons. So, that is going to be it's a great big problem for you. Now, you see. can't get a man like, you see, Sai Baba or a man like Jai Krishnamurti or a man like uh, Bhuttananda or you see Mahesh uh, Yogi those people. But all the other playbacks, you see, you can get them cheaper by the dozen, as the expression has it. But they may be putting themselves and uh, putting you. But how do we go about finding the direction of that change within? I don't know. I don't have any answer for that question. It is not yet right. Except, you see, not to give any credence to <laughs> any claims that these people make, howsoever interesting they may seem to you, however long standing this Interesting people but have we are, we are <coughs> trying to build a thing where that credence can be tested. That is the point. This is the point. Yes. That credence can be tested and disqualified. I am afraid you are making the greatest and biggest mistake, even toying with the idea of paying any consideration to, to the claims that these people have been made. No, but no, I am not suggesting it is unscientific, of course. You have to take into picture. Everything. No, no. We yeah. don't want. We don't want to bring yogis at all. In, in fact, our idea is the ordinary normalcy to come to to shift from uh, statistical normality, which we are talking about. That is the only thing we have. Only statistical normality. Anything shift that doesn't from fall. uniqueness. No, no. You no. are saying everybody is unique. Every individual is unique. That is not studied by science till now. We want to do that. Then you see, then we, our sciences are inadequate to handle it. That is the reason. Each individual but has to be studied in no, an individual way. 
operate and are void within the framework of the Newtonian physics. You see, but there comes a time, time when you are uh, trying to achieve a breakthrough. You find that all oh, this is a sort of a stranglehold, and you find you have no way of breaking that or freeing yourself from the strength. If through some luck or some strange chance, you are freed from that stranglehold, you see, of the knowledge so far accumulated, and it's only a miracle that can help you, you see, to free yourself from that, because anything you do on any level, in any direction is only adding to that, you will achieve a sort of a quantum, you see, accomplish a quantum gem. But since you are interested, you see, in technology, making use of the result of this quantum gem, you see, for purposes of giving continuity to your research, you have to make that part of this. I want to give the example of Picasso. Picasso had the same problem, you see, he wanted to break away from the techniques. And then he did succeed in achieving that breakthrough. And then after that, he became a model for everybody. Every chief artist is now repeating the same. So one day, you see, we have to break, you see, the Einstein in physics as well. That, that is really the problem. Hmm? Every yeah, time you break through the same model and then close it. Yes, I, I submit that nature is trying to create something unique every time. And that's the only creative thing. I may be wrong, I don't know, you're all scientists. Nature doesn't seem to use anything as a model. You know, when once it perfects and creates something unique, and that unique individual is thrown off, you see, the, the evolutionary uh, movement. So that individual has no use for nature at all. That's all that I am maintaining. Quite interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so that is why I say whatever I am saying, whatever is my state of being, whatever the way I am functioning has no social content at all. Nature has no use for me. Can I ask one All right. question? Okay. Yes. First, a unique thing comes up. Then it becomes a closed model. I mean, this is repeatedly occurring. Yes. If a person, I mean, so also the person's development, he finds that he flowered out, then he became closed, and this produced intense constriction and restriction in him. And he comes for help. How are we going to no, I'm not apply? I'm not going to please say that again. I personally feel yes. that the unique flowering state has certain properties of its own. Yes. A type of thing. Yes. And when it becomes a closed model which is determined by the model, yes. it has got certain constrictive expressions. Yeah, I think that is where the whole culture has gone wrong. That's right. By using the, the model of a Jesus or a Buddha or a Muhammad right. or a Mahavira, right. Right. we have destroyed the possibility yeah. of nature throwing up, right. you see, unique individuals, not one but hundreds, maybe thousands. Now, I want to bring the social context. A person caught in the web of this model, modern ideas of state, what yes. they call right. when they come to us, how can we? How can we means we are also maybe caught up? We are also caught up. But probably one is less caught up and one there are various grades. It is just a blind man leading a blind man. Right, right. But how do we relate ourselves? I am not even saying three. First of all, you see the, the greatest error in dealing with this so called unique man, if there are any, is to relate, you see, what they are saying to the way you are functioning. That's right. Huh? Now, for that, can we have aids to help in relating for uniqueness? This is all I want. Yes, the uniqueness is not something which can be turned out of a turn, which can of come out of that person. Of a back to it. No, it's like catalysis. No, I, I, that's the reason why I have always felt and I feel very strongly that, you see, this individual has no use for the society at all. But suppose, not only that, suppose see, we have to relate. You are, you see, you have no reference point. What is the reference point you have? No, no, by you say reference point, it's a model. No, it is, the, it, is the, it is the society or culture or whatever you want to call it that has created all these individuals. Hmm? 
So for the main purpose of maintaining the continuity of that culture, the status quo of that culture. So this is, 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 is an impossible task, you see, we, we are stuck with here. The individual has to use what the society has given him. So he is only strengthening every action of his, every experience of his, he is strengthening and fortifying that and maintaining the continuity of that. So I, always give, right. I always give the simile of a man riding a tiger. You see, he wants to get off the tiger, you know. But he cannot because of the fear that the tiger might gobble him. If uh, through some strange chance or some luck is thrown off, the tiger maintains its own momentum, he is thrown. See? So, that individual has nothing to do with that to see tiger anymore. I put it there. All right. You said this unique individual has no social He problem. does not for a moment say to himself that he is a unique individual. No, no. He does not for a moment say. But, but uh, let us not uh, designate either him or others who are calling him. All right. But there is a unique state. Yes. Right? That unique state. That unique state by presence in a society which are determined by various things. No, and the tree is there. I know. You see, but don't you think what kind of thing? presence of a unique state in the middle of a society induces unique states not as a model, but okay. merely by the presence of it, it will trigger up a change within the individual which will make it better. This is all I want to ask. No, I, I still maintain that there is a place. I say no. You see, even the nature has discarded this because this individual cannot reproduce one like this, either physically yes. or spiritually. That may be an unscientific statement to make, because I no, don't want to make any unscientific statement no, 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 because, because, you see, the, the spermatozoa that is there has not been tested and found useless for impregnating an ovum. So I cannot, but nor am I going to, or nor am I interested, you see, in helping, you see, the scientific research to prove that it has no way of impregnating the ovum, but I know that, you see. So physically, this individual cannot reproduce one like this, so nature has no use for him. You know, nature's purpose is to reproduce, and that's the only way it can maintain its continuity. And flower out your from time to time throw out you see yeah. individuals and not use them as models. That's right. That's all that I'm saying. But so the tree is there, what will you do with the tree? It's not its concern. It happens to be there. No, no I cannot. The periodic growing up of uniqueness. That is itself a, a flowering unfolding person. You see, that is bound to happen in individuals who through some chance, accident, free themselves from the burden of the entire cost of man. Not only the, um, the past of your own and the past of everything that existed before. So I maintain that you see you are somehow find yourself back in the primordial, primeval state of consciousness. I want to put that in quote and unquote, you see, without primitive. So that individual has no use for society, he's just there, you see, on a hot sunny day, you want to sit under the tree for a while because it is shade, number one. Number two, you see, you can cut the tree into pieces and use it as a fuel and cook your own food, it is not interesting. And if you are a painter, you can paint it, you see. A poet, write a beautiful piece of poem on, you see, the both here tree or what be a, a daffodil or what be a rose and so on and so forth. There is also a danger if you sit under the tree, see the, the coconut might fall on your head and split your <laughs> head into two pieces. The danger is also there. So this individual becomes a threat to the society. Hmm? So the, if he is a real threat to the society or culture or whatever you want to call it, that is going to liquidate this. As long as it is not a threat, it is already a So what kind of a use that man has to that society as it is structured today, as it is functioning? 
So that is why I say the, the fact that we have used all these unique individuals, we use different kinds of language in different times as models, not knowing very well what is there. That's so I don't believe so I don't believe in if you see the Loka Sangraha and helping mankind for what is that, compassionate reasons and all that kind of a thing. Uh, I, I don't believe in that kind of a thing. So you don't think there is a non-model influence? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see anything. You see, I can tell you something. You see, since you are interested in yoga and pranayama, <coughs> I don't do anything, meditation and all. I myself did yoga for seven years in Sivananda Samsu. Later on, you see, whatever happened to me, I don't know. You see. So I felt that this body could not take the outburst of energy. So I spoke to a friend of mine who happened to be a yoga teacher. He said, I don't know what you are talking about, but somehow I have a feeling that whatever happened to you has happened in an extraordinary way. And uh, maybe my father, Krishna Chari, you see, you see, he will be able to help you. So I went there and took some yoga lessons and did it for three years. Later on, I discovered that, see, the whole yogic business, you see, it is uh, uh, whatever you are doing, you see, is counter to the way this natural body is functioning. The same problems. Same difficulties I felt with uh, Pranaya. So I tried to discuss these things with them. They said, you see, what you say may be true, but this doesn't fit into our, you see, Patanjali Yoga Sutras and all that kind of thing. So I said, I'm not going to do it. So meditation and so on and so forth. See, then once you see this, this living organism is freed from the, the stranglehold of this or whatever you want to call it. Anything that you do using that instrument to achieve, be it, you see, uh, control of the body or uh, uh, states of bliss, beatitude, immensity, God knows what, is violence there. So it, it is something like using, you say, a force to create a, a peace what we call peace, you see, it's like between two wars. It's just like using war as a means to create a peaceful world. So it is not interested in any one of those things, the bliss, beatitude and all that ecstasies that those people are talking about. Because it has come to the end of that experiencing and discovered that there is no such thing as a new experience at all. You know? So this repetitive process is, is the one that is wearing itself out. You see, that is why I was emphasizing this morning or yesterday. One of the justices of the High Court came to see me yesterday. So, you see, I said that it is not a question of reaching your goal. Your, your search itself has to come to an end, not because you have achieved, you see, what you have been trying to achieve or what you are after. But the search comes to an end with a great big bang, as it goes. So a hungry man is satisfied with the crumbs thrown at him. So when he has the crumbs thrown at him, that satisfies his hunger a little bit. And then he wants a full loaf of bread. And that is promised by those ugly saints who have in the market. Not only that, you see, you know, the whole wheat bread, five cereals, ten cereals, and so on and so forth. But it is not a question of satisfying your hunger, but let that hunger burn itself out. See, that is what actually happens. Not because of what you do, but in spite of what you have done. You know? So all that these people are doing has no relevance to the state in which you find yourself. All that is meaningless. See, trying to... Um, Quench you were thirst to these thirst quenchers, which all these people are providing, has no meaning at all. The basic question is that somewhere along the line, man felt for the first time this self-consciousness. You know? 
So all the religious teachings, all the discoveries of the modern science come out of that divided state of consciousness in man. And so they are destructive in their very nature. That is the reason why we are progressively moving in the direction of total annihilation of everything that exists on this planet. There seems to be no way of reversing that. But what is it's the not my doom song or any no, other. No, what is the next phase of the development of subconsciousness and all this other person? There, there is no other, way, no other way. He will go and he will take everything along the line. Except that, you see, we will learn, you see, how to live, not because of that love, kindness, brotherhood, you see that these sages, saints and saviors of mankind have been teaching us, but because of terror. Because of terror. Just the way, you see, these cells function in our body. See, this cell is interested in survival. <coughs> And the only way it can survive is to cooperate with the self that is next there. Not as an ideal, not as a spiritual model, but pure and simple survival. And its survival depends upon cooperation with the next self. So I don't see that there is even any federal structure in the body. I may be wrong. I don't know because I can't make any sense. They are all loose. You see, each one is an autonomous unit. And their survival depends upon cooperation with the next so that is like the transactional dependence. Transactional dependence. Yeah. And also there is, you see, this in this structure, the feeling, which is not an emotion, that this is immortal. So that's a pseudo feeling. If you sure of certainty, if it survives at this moment, the next moment is a sure. So it moves from moment to moment. The physical functioning of the body he is not interested in living for 100 years or 150 years. You will all achieve that, you see. In the sense that you will keep the man going for 150 years, 300 years, I don't know. It will be possible and it is within the easy reach of the medical technology. I tell them, so what do you want to live for 300 years, 300 years of misery? You know, that the problem is solving this, not living for 300 years with the same misery. This is what I want to ask you. Yes. In this transactional framework, isn't the body of a whole, uh, isn't there a transcendental thing trying to come out? No, I, get, I don't think so. It is highly individualistic. You see, not the individuals that the culture is or you want to be, but highly individualistic in a different sense. And at the same time, you see, Maintenance of that individuality depends upon the essential cooperation with what is next to you. Yes. And there is another thing which I am emphasizing these days is that the awareness business. So you see that is going around the world as a means to use that awareness, choiceless or otherwise, to bring about a change. So this is not interested in change of anything. This is a perfect model that the nature has created. But culture has destroyed, you see, the possibility of everything developing into see, individual uniqueness. That is the reason why many of those cells that we have there are, you see, inactive, very inactive. So the, the control, you see, of that human body uh, through the help of this thinking has destroyed the possibility of this humans growing into complete whole humans. Yeah. How to form exactly the uh, potential? I uh, is not the, the, the transactional plan. The potential, the the potential is, is there already. So the nature is trying to create yeah. individuals, yeah. unique individuals. But somewhere along the line, you see, we, something placed us on, the, on a wrong track, and there seems to be no way of... So could we evolve a conscious mode of approach, not bound by the transactional... Uh, you are using the word conscious. conscious. No, in the sense that uh, free consciousness, not under the... No, I don't, possible. I don't know. You see, this awareness is the activity of the brain, sir. Ah, that's right. But that is again... Not, under not, the, not an instrument to be used to bring about any change. No. Any change. Okay. No. That, that is again part of this. Part of this, just the way you see pancreatic juice is part of it, you see, created by the 
the pancreas but and the liver, you see, bile, you see. So that is the animals also have this awareness, you know. Mm -hmm. So as you said, going back into the non-primitive primal, non there is, there is the thing that you can do. No? Sorry. <laughs> No, you see, that is why it is, there, is there something that is like it's 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 natural because the power was it, it is natural, you see, to ask that question, but that very question makes it impossible. So that's why I tell the people, I don't know if there is any such thing as enlightenment. If you say this to yourself, why not me? You ain't got a chance. <laughs> why not me? It will be a stop. That's good. Making will make it distorted. Yes. You are only adding to the great uh, burden of conflict, etc. Yes. So well, what is one to do in such a situation? I really don't. I don't have any answer. I don't even ask the questions. You see, maybe, maybe, maybe they take the emergence of this image. Huh? In any way. <laughs> I think the answers have to come from microbiologists <laughs> and uh, those who are doing research in genetics and not from this body, I'm sorry to say. And that of course will be placed in the hands of the state and the state will destroy what little freedom we have today. And that's the end. So, so it, is the, it is neither the, neither the state nor the holy man who will destroy it. Yes. Maybe if you leave it to the, you see the computer has a better chance. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the day the man frees himself from the pride, then it is he who has created the computer. And feel proud, you see, but you, uh, today you are feeding the computer with your own data. But now, you see, they have these latest models, they are thinking, they are self-correcting. And uh, I tell these people, I watched on the television somebody talking about it. Now that they are feeding the computers with the protein formula and all the bacteria that is there in your body, Maybe, you see, they will guide us. You see, if you let this body to function like an automaton, like a computer, with an extraordinary intelligence, it has not the acquired intelligence. Well, we don't program it. We don't this program it. We don't program it. We don't it is already programmed, pressed and buttoned. So we are all the time interfering. So, this has been, the servant has taken possession now. The master is now under the thumb of that fellow. And if through some machinations we push that if into the corner and if the servant has to leave, you know he will adopt, you see, a scorched earth policy. He will burn the whole That's thing true. and then go. And knowing very well that he will also be burnt along with the master and the house. So that is the situation. The answers are not going to come from these holy men. We can, you see, invent, the, the computers are going to invent more gods, you know, than the human mind has so far done. Provided the, the programmers of the computer should be the natural products, not the human beings programmed. Then again, it, it is already programmed, pressed and buttoned. So what do you have to do? It is usually what happens in all these diagnostic facilities is we program. So it is subject to the, our limitation in his circle is the answers you get the what is it called? Uh, printout. <laughs> so you already know the printout in advance what it is going to be. So that's the reason why you see I don't get up on a platform and talk to people. So I have no message to give to the world. I'm just here, you see, I have to live in some place. Uh, I have some means of uh, going somewhere to avoid the heat here or California or somewhere. If somebody comes to see me, I talk to him, to point out, you see, the absurdity of what we do, the absurdity of this conversation. So I'm not savior of man, and I tell them the world has needs must rather be saved from the saviors of man. We have plenty of them in mind. So I, I am difficult to observe also in an unbiased way. I say, how can you? How is it possible, you see, what separates from whatever is there is the knowledge we have. So, the very demand to know is only to add to the knowledge you already have. See, that is the only way it can maintain its continuity. Or if it's a total experience and not based on a previous knowledge. There is no experience except through the aid of knowledge. If it's a vicious thing, knowledge gives you the experience. 
and the experience strengthens the knowledge. So the primal we have we we have this we are now far far away from the primal situation. It is so contaminated. So we are trying to throw. It's it's not it's in your hands. No, but can we think what is not in our hands? What is the way? No, there is no power. It's the outside can can help you. No outside agency can be of any help. So if we are lucky enough to free ourselves from seeking the aid from the outside agency, then there is no helplessness seen. So my favorite uh, refrain of my doom song is that you live in hope and time. <laughs> it is a madman singing his doom song. And he would go. And I found that they are doing it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't be of any help. I don't know how I can be of any help. First of all, that is too big. It's an undertaking. Undertaking is not good. Enough. Anyway, in India it is all right. <laughs> undertakers, you know, in America, but it is a real undertaker's business. <laughs> you know. You see, I don't know, I don't like the word consciousness at all. To me, consciousness is another word for life. Energy is another word for life. So, first, the thought should burn itself out. You know that. Without splitting itself into it. And that is something which cannot be uh, made to happen to any volition. Thought to the head of anybody. So, he doesn't have to be you see, a, an individual who has prepared himself for this kind of a thing. You see, he doesn't like this holy man. When I say that this kind of a thing can happen to a, a murderer, to a, to a thief, to a, you see, to a con man, to a rapist, you see, he has as much a chance, if not a better chance, than all those products we have in this world. So then immediately you throw a question at me and ask, well, Buddha a rapist? <laughs> then I am not interested in answering that question. But this kind of a thing, you see, is a random thing. You know, somehow you see something hits, you, see, you know, like a lightning hitting and burning the whole thing. So that individual has no use for the society and the society is not interested in that individual because we function you see, within the field of the sinners and saints, you see, they, they are the opposite ends of the same spectrum, but basically they are one and the same. You see. So, this unique man is outside the spectrum of the sinner and the saint. The society cannot be tolerate, you see, anything outside this frame. Arising from that, can, can we ask a question yes. as to what line we should take? Yes. Now, this was very enlightening. But still, I'm left without an action point. I have discovered that, you see, the, the description of the way I am functioning is itself, you see, is creating a sort of a technique. The okay. idea that is right. to just describe, to make you get, you see, feel and realize that, you see, the image you have of this state yes. has absolutely no relation whatsoever with the way the actual functioning of the living organism, how the body is functioning, see, you have no idea at all. It's whoever created it, it doesn't matter. See, that's a perfect piece of creation. Unfortunately, ruined by you see, this culture, ruined by these religious teachers that this culture has now, given. Suppose we, I mean, to the best of our possibility, we make certain that we do not interfere with anything, you know, what is Non-interference is interference. It's, a, it's not a metaphysical statement that I am making. Main, maintain an openness and wait for a recording of an absolute now, Waiting for something to happen. Can we do this? The waiting something to happen prevents the possibility of such a thing occurring. No, no, not waiting for something to happen. What is the other? No, I'm just recording whatever that happens. 
you don't have to do a thing, sir. You don't have to purify them. You don't have to do a thing. You know, this is what you discover. You know, I was telling these people, I searched all my life, 49 years of my life, searching for a man called Yuji. So my whole culture put me on the wrong track. Go to Buddha, go to this man, all right, forget about the dead teachers, living teachers. You go there, and finally you discover for yourself that what you are looking for is already here. This is like the cartoon we read in the American papers. If somebody is searching for the enemy and finally he comes to realize that the enemy he is looking for is himself. So then you see, when you are thrown into a situation like that, you don't even know what you are. See, I can't say myself that I am a free man. So if I say to myself I am a free man, that means the same knowledge is the operation. You see, that is still the same old you, you know. So that, that is really the, the crux of the problem. Ramana, maniac, lunatic, he was singing his song and uh, it goes, yes. one day he drops dead. Can, can that you see, the medium right? of expression is you. That's right. It's you or he or the tape recorder or the fellow who is taking it. So, Provided the the moment, it the moment it is expressed, it is already captured in that frame. There but is no other way. That we are not taking that as a model. So it will be a continuous expression, not being bound by the feedback model of yeah, Suppose we assume that. Uh, that, is, that is an assumption which has no basis. Now, no. how else to capture? You are still you are still caught in this idea of changing something. No, no. For some reason or the other, when the I want to communicate a change. No, no, you don't. It, it, no it, I don't it, want to change. It is not what for? What for? No, no, then again a purpose comes which is the very communication. So I don't want to ask what for. I merely want to communicate. No, no communication is possible. And no communication is necessary. Being born. We are born with only limitations. Do we? But don't you think we are born with limitations to become unlimited? There is a process of becoming. That is also part of the game. To correct. But how to make the game more interesting? More interesting. Not distracted. How can this destroy? It can't destroy anything. See, destroying something is destroying itself. See, that's all that I'm saying. You, see. you know, it, it cannot, it's except for the survival. Survival, uh, you see, one form of life lives on another form of life. You know, whether you like it or not. That is the transaction. That is, you know, see, uh, that is the way the life moves. You know? But then the emergence of something Trans life phenomenon. There is nothing, there is anything nothing trans. It's always caught in a web. It's always and I'm sure there must be a non web entity which propels it. Well, that is what those people are. No, I'm not quoting <laughs> selling us. Selling us to the marketplace. You know, a shoddy piece of goods there. But inside the marketplace, isn't there a. a, a it, is a not a, no, it, it, it is not a marketable commodity. You see, there must be a demand. No, no, they will follow this first the demand that has <coughs> always been there, which is put in by the culture, to change them. See, so when the demand for bringing about a change within is not there, and then you see the demand for changing things outside is also its not. It is not that I am uh, anti-social or you see that I am not thankful to the society, or I have a bounden duty to play my part and help my fellow men, all oh, that is gone. There are lots of ego determinants. Yes. No, so the bottom is trying to see that there is no ego there to That's all. And that comes as a shattering blow. But you will waste all your time in chasing something that does not exist. You invest everything in them. Why did you put it that you have not changed it? Not are you interested in change? No, but you see but that. 
If I drop the ball, you are impelling change to experience a change. You don't, you don't want to change. It is not an experience, so it cannot be shared with us. No, sharing is an experience. It is not an experience. It's what I am saying is not an experience. No, what is it when you feel a change? And not the, not the pure making. So, but you see, I, I, I don't see any deterioration around me. I don't see, you see, of course, you see, I don't say all that is an illusion that is ridiculous. The bombing, the killing of people is not an illusion. Not at all. You know, there isn't anything that you can do about that. So, the moment you try to do something, you are adding more to it. It may be you see, for humanistic reasons or for this reason or that reason. But you are adding to them. I have no illusions that you see that I am going to help anyone. How to conceive of a non adding action? It will be another concept, you see. We will be stuck with another concept. I think the, I there are two things. You are, you are, the concept determine your action. And concept lies behind and so forth. It is the other two. The thought that the cause and effect relationship is created by the logical thing. These are not two events. It's one. You see, turn the switch on, the light is on. Is there? Look as if there are two different events, but it is actually one event. The time factor, the space does not exist at all. See, yes, we yes, have yes. So creation and destruction is going on simultaneously. So the birth of the thought and the death of the thought is taking place simultaneously. And that is the reason why I say there is no such thing as it. Even for this body there is no. It changes. If there is a chemical change. The putrefaction is life. You can't say that it is. Satisfaction to my children or to my dear and dear ones to say that the life is still going on there. But the form has changed, my relationship with that, you see, is, is, is the void that is created by the disappearance of the individual is all that I can experience. But not death. Death can never be experienced. Neither your birth nor death can ever be experienced. But, so for such an individual, there is no birth and death. This is going through this process of. Uh, Dying all the time, you see, you know. I don't know if it makes any sense. I'm sorry, you can't throw any light. But the problem is the problem is you are facing. But this is, of course, the uh, feeling we also have on that dimension. On the ordinary dimension, uh, is physiology. Is Similar to that, and also it's dissimilar in second aspect. It is dissimilarities in dissimilarity. Well, I, you, if we document, maybe that can teach us something again ordinary. Ordinary to ordinary. That it is certainly all. will. It certainly will. It certainly will help mankind. Yes. At the transactional level. Yes, it, on that level. See, so, my position is there isn't much that I can contribute or throw any light on. on, on, on but this discussion that she has come out yes, here, yes. you know, is the extraordinary. That's ultimately that yeah, is... I want to show you, I'm not an exhibitionist. You have read this all yes, this yes. But I don't know, they are still... This, this has always bothered me, you see. Two things I have been asking doctors. I have lots of doctors. This somehow, for some reason, psychologists don't like me, the psychiatrists don't like me, because they say there is no psyche and no business. Well, this is nonsense, and I make statements to the effect that Freud was the stupid, the stupidest god of the 20th century. I'm sorry to say that, but anyway. But he has influenced our thinking for 100 years. You can't deny that. So, good or for bad, you see, he, he has been there and he has created a new slang. Even I use neurotic situation, psychotic situation, many of those phrases which I use, you see. So, to that extent, he has contributed a lot of words for us to carry on the meaningless conversation, meaningless lessons, you see. So, these two things have been bothering me. Not that they are really bothering me, but what is left here when the continuity of 
knowledge is not there, is one series of interactions. There are no persons, there are no things. That is what even the modern physics is now uh, talking about. So whatever is happening there is happening here. So there is no space. It is the thought that creates the space. So at this sunrise, just the way the ocean is changing, you have high tides, low tides. So here the, the energy flow also is affected by the sunrise, sunset, half moon, quarter moon, full moon, and then you see new moon like that, you see. So probably other planets are also influencing this moon. Since you have this armor around you all the time, you are not affected by what is happening. And uh, you see, the two things that have always uh, intrigued me. One is that there are moments when, this, this will interest you, moments when there is some kind of a breathing which bypasses the lungs altogether. You see, so that is really probably what is meant by prana or pranayama. See, so, Yama, I don't know what it means actually. That's what the scholars who tell us, but anyway, I don't go by what they say. So then you see, this this is one one uh, movement. It is like a jellyfish. You see, in the ocean, in Medusa, or whatever you want to call it. This the the throb and the beat and uh, see, and the pulse of life. And this has no isolated, independent existence of its own other than what is happening now. No doctor has given me any satisfactory reply, but they don't think that it is possible. See? So this only one fellow doctor, Leboyer, who has written a lot of books on childbirth and all that, he said that this kind of a thing happens in newborn babies, you know. So for all practical purposes, when you see the death takes place, see, it very often happens here. Because the death is a process of renewal. The body goes through this process of dying so often. And every time it renews itself, it is given, you see, a longer lease. One day when it cannot renew itself, it drops dead. So, so this has always intrigued. And uh, the actual yoga is very strange, you see. It has nothing to do with this 150 or 200 acrobatic things to stand on your head, on your shoulder, or hang from the tree and all that. See, the yoga begins with the physical death. You know, first the physical, clinical death has got to take place. And once the thought stops, without splitting itself into two, the body goes through a physical death. This seems to have happened to many of those persons like Sri Ramakrishna and Oh, no. Ramana Maharishi, there, there is a record to show I am not uh, interested in the certificates of those people, nor am I interested in finding out whether this is authentic or not. So, the, the body has to be a stick first. <laughs> That's the, the word they use in the crime books. See? The death must first take place, and then you see the yoga begins. There. See, the yoga is the, the attempt on the part of this body to bring back the movements of the body into its natural rhythm. This is an extraordinary movement. You see, I don't know if you have ever seen a newborn baby. It begins to move like that, to take the whole movement of the body into its very natural rhythm. I have often felt very strongly that, you see, the movements of the body that I experience after every time the body goes through a process of dying, so naturally, you see the, the pulse goes down, the heartbeat practically is not existing. If you want me to put myself, I'm not interested, I'm not selling this, I'm just making a statement, take it or leave it. So, uh, you see, it is much closer to what the Chinese uh, talk about, you see, the I, what I the movements, very graceful movements, this one, like the movements of the newborn baby. So that is the beginning of yoga and not the other way around. You see, you do all those 150 postures, you see, and then talk of savasana. It begins with this tip and then you see the movements of this body to put it back in its normal rhythm is probably the basis of the origin of yoga. I can't say that. So maybe their disciples watched this and observed this and tried to imitate that. And in the process, they added, you know, hundreds of thousands of postures, just the way 
you see when sex becomes a bore, you know, you have to use uh, hundreds of uh, sex postures. And that is what the Kama Sutras talk about in exactly the same way the Yoga Sutras talk of 150 varieties of postures. But you see, the first thing that has to happen is the physical death, you see. And then, you see, is the beginning of the yoga, is the beginning of the pranayama, or whatever you want to call it. So, this is one of the things that has always intrigued me. See, there is no question of my demanding that kind of a thing to happen. There is nothing that I can do to make it happen. It, it, it just happens, you see, out of nowhere. And, you see, but still, you see, there is something that is there which is experiencing these things. That's why I'm able to talk about that experience. But anything that you experience is a worthless experience. But the only nice thing about it is the demand for more and more and more of those experiences or less and less of those experiences is absent. So you see, it takes in its right. There is a high tide, low tide, no tide, you see, something like that. And the other thing is this, you see, uh, you have described this, doctor has described this. Uh, so you see these swellings here. No pain, nothing of this sort. You see, sometimes the whole swelling is, is like this. Oh, yeah. Is it around the neck? Is sometimes the whole thing. So now here, these two are very important. No pain. You see, oh, no, it comes swollen up and then. Yeah. And then you see, after a while, or you see. But if you are in, 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 Not only that, you see, if you are in front of something directly. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you are looking at a beautiful mountain. You never say that it is beautiful, but you see the effect of that on the body produces all kinds of uh, changes in this body. That is the effect of beauty on the body. When it is one unitary moment, and then what happens, you become conscious of this fact that something extraordinary is taking place before you take a deep breath. Suddenly, say out of nowhere, you take a deep breath. That may be the reason why they have used the word breathtaking to so the only way you become conscious of things that are happening around you is through this series of changes in your breathing pattern. Sometimes they are brief breaths, sometimes you see, you don't even know, sometimes like the bellows, you see, when the oxygen goes down from the brain, it needs oxygen. See, so you have to, the body resorts to itself, resorts to this kind of, you see, the bellow breathing, all of a sudden from out of nowhere. So it has, you see, a tremendous mechanism, you know. So when, when you eat naturally, the blood rushes into the stomach. The stomach needs the blood. When you are eating, you are, I'm not thinking anything. I don't even know what I'm eating. You see. If somebody gives me nitrogen acid, I know that it is nitric acid or sulfuric acid because this smell tells me that it is not good for the body. So that's why I said you are not primitive. All the knowledge that we have acquired is there ready when there is a demand for it to come into operation and they help you in that situation. So, that seems to be the, the only thing, you see, you, there are only interactions. Uh, there, there, there are no persons, there are no things, nothing there. Just this, the nyam, lal, breathing. Yes, does not come along with this. Not necessarily, sometimes, you see, when you are lying down or sitting there, suddenly, you see, the whole thing see, changes. And the breathing slows down to such an extent that you feel you are grasping, gasping for breath, you know. You see, and suddenly, you see, this is something like the, the second uh, wind. I don't know if you have noticed this, uh, the, uh, the sportsman who was participating in the running. You see, you can be certain that whoever achieves that uh, second wind, he will be the one that will win the race. No doubt about it. Because you see, the thought has no more uh, any influence, no fear, and then you see the whole momentum is maintained by the second. So even that sec this is this is what most of these people, yogis, are trying to achieve, the second breath. You see, but there is something more than that. But even that, you see, is, is not there anymore. But you see, this is this is the the, the bypassing of the lungs and the whole of your being is is one pulse, the beat and the throb. Oh, it, is, it, it has a, a force of its own any day sometimes, you know, when there is nobody to talk to, you yes. see. I sit there, 
happen. All kinds of strange things that happen. You see. So this fellow has singled out only the thymus gland. You see, so uh, but there are other glands, pituitary, pineal glands. You see, what is the gland you are? Pineal gland. gland is a tremendous thing like right that. You see, the pineal gland is the one that controls the, the whole movements of the body, the breathing patterns. You see, everything is controlled by that. That is the reason why they call it jnana, jnana, agnya chakra. You see, when the thought is not there, the other one takes over and controls. This is very painful. It's very painful. Why it is painful? Because the thought, if it is not used for achieving anything, either the spiritual goals or the material goals, it burns itself out. This can be experienced by an individual. It is some sort of an ionization of thought takes place. So when this accumulates there, it has to escape. But the body has a limitation of its own. So that is the reason why when you see the energy is lashing against you see the, the form of the body, it's a very painful thing. Not the painful experiences we experience. Uh, because there there's nobody who is experiencing the body is experience. This is something which they don't know. It's a very painful thing. You see, it's, so this is a voctuous concourse of atoms. And every time there, there is see, this disintegration of thought or complete burning out of thought, it is like, you see, it's an atomic explosion which leaves behind uh, the fallout. So that is why I say this body is something extraordinary. You can't improve that body. You can't do anything. You know? So I'm not against medical technology or anything. That's a tremendous achievement, you see. But uh, personally, I, I don't. Uh, yes, maybe if I don't like this body, medicine cannot change my body. There are plastic surgeons probably. If you don't like my stubborn nose, I can go to a plastic surgeon and you can ask him to have it. The <coughs> no, but you see that if it is fashionable to have actually noses, yes, or change the eyes, change the color. But uh, the brain transplantation either is good. He is going to come. You see, every we part of the body. Yes. I, mean, yes. I don't. Uh, that is uh, too far. You don't know. I don't. Well, our father was one of the first surgeons who performed brain surgery. Yes. In the medical textbooks, they have what they call Herman syndrome. See, he was in, yes. one of the top surgeons in uh, Switzerland. He was invited by Mayo Clinic to perform the brain surgery. So that was uh, 50, 60 years ago. That's and then. Kervan, the Kervan is name. You find his statues in the hospitals. Yes. The Kervan. And he is in the medical textbooks, uh, they call it Kervan syndrome. Look at that disease. He was a well known surgeon. He wrote 1920 uh, textbook on surgery. And, uh, so, one of the. Now, her, her niece, you see, her brother's, uh, her sister's son, he is doing. Uh, Research in the glands. He was in the United States, was sent by the French government to do some research. We had a long discussion on this. You see, he told me that this is of great interest to us. You see, to remove the religious slant word, describe the whole thing in physical and physiological terms, it would be of great interest to us. And he said one thing, you see, all those books uh, that is, uh, the fiction books they write, uh, are written by experts in their fields, in the field of biology and all those things. They envisage the possibility of such human beings uh, that as the end products of the evolutionary process, not the spiritual beings, not the, the perfect man or such thing. You see, you see, nature is trying to create, you see, individuals like this who are functioning uh, in a, in, a, in a different way, functioning in the sense that there is only function, you know, responding to the stimuli. And to put it that way is misleading because the, the response and stimulus and response is a unitary thing. I can't say that there are sensations. The moment I experience the sensations, the knowledge that I have about the sensations has already translated. No. So the, the sensory perceptions are extraordinarily sensitive. You know, this is a wonderful creation. I don't know who created this body. It's an extraordinary. Once there was a beautiful lady. They said, you see, 
that beauty is the creation of the nature. <laughs> you see, you know, the credit goes to the nature, but not uh, your attempt. You see, to beautify yourself, the use of all the cosmetics and all. So nature is is creating some unique individuals. We have messed up the whole business. Messed up because the whole thing is built on the foundation. That everything that is there in nature is created for the benefit of us. So anything we discover is used for the destruction of man and the destruction of man. If man goes so lost, nothing is lost. Yesterday I was quoting something. We have today one and a half million species of animals and half a million species of plants on this planet. And that represents only one tenth of what existed before. So many things have become extinct. You see, the present uh, breed of humans that we have on this planet probably have come out of the degenerate species somewhere. The mutation has to have taken place in some degenerate species. That is why we have messed up the whole. But is there anything that anybody can do to reverse it or change the course of the whole thing is anybody's With this image, uh, can some of these go fall out from the tiger? Can they change the course? The claims that they make has really no basis because they talk of affecting the whole of human consciousness. You see, that I think is a very common thing. I don't think they realize what they are. What do they mean by consciousness? See, the consciousness that we know of is the one that is created by the thinking of man. That's all that we know. So you can affect that uh, consciousness through propaganda, through persuasion, through drugs, you see, more easily than otherwise, uh, and change it. But the change is only a change within the same framework. How can we change it? Is it necessary to change? What for? I don't. Know. No, it's not necessary. But don't you think a, a planting process has occurred? No, really. Has it really occurred? Man, has he come to? Uh, no. So the sensitive part is still remaining. It is still there. Inside. It is still there. So, by you see, it, is like, it, is, it is like, sir, the seed you you plant there, the whole tree is there. You see in that sea, everything that you see here was there in the single cell. The whole blueprint is there. So if you don't water it or if you plant it, you see in a, a soil which is not uh, suitable for you see the sprouting of the seeds, it perishes. That's all. Nothing is lost for mankind. So should we not know what soil is ideal for that seed? <laughs> <laughs> He will, he will only invent, you see, the, the sprays that we are spraying on the trees, is anything that comes out of that thinking. It will be one of those, uh, you know, when you uh, what do you have the names? <laughs> fertilizers and, and ruin the whole thing. All fertilizers can come out of them. We need this too. Yeah, Bob, sure, you have to feed all these people. Even a beautiful woman needs some cosmetics. Yeah, but you have to kill unless they have to You have to, you, that's the reason why you are killing thousands of whales. Whale oil is necessary for all these cosmetics. <laughs> Otherwise, you, see, you want to save the whales, and uh, through that process, you will put out of job uh, Maxwell, uh, what other those uh, Rubinstein and uh, yeah. Elizabeth Ogden, they will all go out of business. They wait, wait until we discover some synthetic stuff. I think it's sensitive. What has happened yeah. to that Dr. Clark? I am not reading the newspapers. Clark, the artificial heart which they have planted in the dentist in America. I think he's still alive. Mm -hmm. so, we heard yeah. two or three days after that. After the oh, yes, yes, yes. Remarkable thing. Yeah. They hope that they will be able to see, create small. Clark said, "We live here again." He is alive. He's alive. He's alive. Very much alive. Very much alive. They showed everything. You see. Ah, they, they, they showed it on the TV. Oh.
everything is an entertainment for the americans holding sure. the president of the united states is an entertainment I was wondering, uh, where is the size? Is it in the brain or uh, one eye? There is no eye there. No it's only a first person singular brain. It's a phenomenon. It is created for yes. transaction. You see, the totality of man's thoughts and feelings and experiences is the eye. You see, that eye is part of the totality of man's thoughts and feelings. So there is only a world mind and there is no such thing as your mind and mine. So that world mind has created us all for this simple reason that that should maintain its consciousness. It is for self-survival. For survival of that. Of that. So you see the self-survival mechanism of this living organism is vitiated to such an extent that your belief also is part of the survival mechanism. See, belonging, you see, to a particular group of fanatics, you see, is also a survival mechanism. It has become a survival mechanism of this human world. Naturally, the, the hydrogen bond, the cobalt bond, is also an extension of the same survival mechanism of this living organism. So much so, it is not possible for us to draw the line and say, that we can do away with the hydrogen bomb and not with the policeman who is protecting my life and my problem. So where do you draw the line? Their way of life and their way of thinking can only be protected by the hydrogen bomb. That is why they are spending so much time. Now, by your expression today, you have uh, sharpened the sensitivity of the group. No, in a direction which was government before and it's coming up. I think it is. I mean, in my. I mean, what you can it, say, I may be imagining. What little opportunity that is there. He's lost. He's lost. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why? Why? Okay, I want a little more. <laughs> no, no, that is some this negation. Is this, uh, I wouldn't yeah. agree with that. Yeah, I don't expect you to agree with me, but that is a fact. No one can agree. Why? Why should that what statement little, come in? What little uh, chance you have, or what little chance that is there, is lost because whatever has been said, whatever is being said has already become part of it. See, it's taken and part of it. Yeah. That's I, the only way. There's no other way. But suppose my sensitivity is a demolition squad to get in for fresh insights. Yeah. Why are you denying it that? It demolishes with the idea of building another no. structure. No. Why are you pursuing it? That, that, is, that is the way it operates. Yes. I know, but suppose I want to cut... No suppositions. I want to cut free from it. Otherwise, I would not have been sitting and... Uh, yeah, we have wasted some time, this is precious time. You could have performed a very beautiful, very essential but neurological... Uh, precious uh, in the uh, transaction uh, exact uh, language. Yes. But I am going beyond the transaction language. I would like to... I mean, there is no be. way of transcending it. Is that, you see, the, the certainty that I have, which is not a logically a certain premise, is a something which intuitive. cannot be... Not intuitive. Right. Is, uh, cannot be transmitted. That is the whole crux. It has to happen. You have to fall from the tiger. The only way... But I, get some, I have fallen. I am crying no, from no, the ground. No, 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 no. This is the point. You have learned but all the tricks. No. You are learning all the tricks of controlling the tiger ah, and keep riding. To. But now I am talking from the floor. I have fallen from the floor. You haven't it. I am not fooled. What Yuji was saying, he also tried as himself. Yes, yes, yes. No, he also went and talked to two people and so on. Similarly, no. no, that won't help. It has to occur within you. But that no, is doubt it will help to occur from within us. Or no, that I am saying that. that it is a miracle of all miracles that whatever happened to me has happened in spite of everything I did, I, I, not because of. Ah, I, that is the I point. That is what I am You saying. are asking because. No, no, I am not asking because. Ah. It just occurred. That is an occurrence which is a causal. 
It's not because it's simultaneous. I am not introducing time between the cause and effect at all. It is a, it's it, an event. It has no cause. No, no, it's an event. Cause plus event. All right. That event is something which you cannot be made to happen. No, it's not made to happen because I didn't ask for it. It's obvious it has not occurred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I don't mean anything. I know, I know. I, know. I don't mean anything. I don't mean anything. No, no, I want to. If I exercise this, how to communicate the happening? It's not possible for me. If there is any way of, because it is not an experience, there is, uh, it's not something that can be shared with somebody. It's just not that I no, want no, to talk it's it's verbalize. Nice. No, not in, you see, not verbalize it means you can create a new language and play games with it. But this is something. No, but any language created will have the same same thing. Mm -hmm. This is That's not what? something to be transmitted because I am emphasizing all the time. I am not. You are not anything. I am not anything that you are not. You know. I become a back bencher already. You see, the moment you see something occurs there, it is something like you touching life at a point where nobody else touched before. No. So it is bound to express itself in an extraordinarily different way. You know, it's something which nobody has seen before. A flower, which I don't know to use the word flower, because it has filthy, mystical okay. connotations about it. You see, so this is so. This is a rare bird, rare animal, rare plant, which you should keep it in a museum and look at. That's all the mystery. I'm sorry. It's a non-relativistic term. That's why you cannot depend on it. It has to be your own. Yes, because you have no reference point I mean, there. There is no reference. There is no reference point there. The change of reference points occurs in a way from that, that is, absolute. No, that is abolition not, of a reference point. Or, I don't know even whether it's abolition. No, no it's the absence is. of a reference point uh, is all that I'm talking about. That cannot be. Uh, eliminated through any volition, any effort on your part or anybody's part. So that that will create from birth we are learning on I, reference point I, additions. So that's all. You have to see so back to birth. I mean, as you grow. No, that's what it's not the word. The primal in the in the final analysis, it is you are genetically <laughs> determined program. That that's all there is. Not that this individual will benefit mankind or put it, you see, on a different uh, path or any such thing. But I think it is genetically, uh, what is the word? Control. You see, such an individual, its problem is, you see, not to get something from somebody, but to reject everything that is offered as a help. So, so it, it, it requires a tremendous guts, you see, to brush aside everything. So, that is why, you see, it is courage, you see. What is there is courage because this greatest thing that it is impossible to occur has occurred, that it freed itself from the burden of the entire possible. So that is why you describe that as a courage, but no amount of cultivation of courage on your part will make it possible for that to be done. That is the reason why you say, if somebody comes, I talk, if nobody comes, it's just fine with me. So I don't think that I have to come in any way contribute anything for the the enrichment or the welfare or, uh, I don't know, progress. progress of mankind. It is not that I am unconcerned with it. So, this feeling is felt here. You see, there is a feeling that is not an emotion, not a sentiment, not a, any one of those things. It's very difficult. What kind of a, a reference point you have there? I'm talking of a feeling, you see, which is felt by the whole of your being, you know. So, and yet you are so helpless, there isn't a 
thing that you can do. Anything you do is adding momentum. So because the ex the medium is is you. The medium is that reference point, whether it is you or uh, or a newspaper man or a television interviewer. He is he is the one. You see through which it is uh, flowing. So. That is the reason why you see some of the Upanishads say you see this very teaching has to be born. The very expression. See, I am not mystifying or, or or any such thing, but but there it is. So it's very difficult. You see the, how these sensory uh, perceptions are here. You can't imagine. You can't imagine. You, you see the physical eye captures the movement, but the thought cannot capture the movement. The what You experience as movement is a thought-induced movement, but not the actual movement. So you are sitting here when the eyes are looking at this thing. The whole of your being is eyes; nothing else is there. You know. So it's a tremendous vista vision. You see, but if you indulge in describing that in romantic and poetic language, you are missing the point. So the whole of your looking is is all one. So. so That is the way the sensory perceptions uh, uh, operate. They, they are all independent. You see, there is no coordinator there who is coordinating these sensory perceptions. But a sort of coordination is necessary to respond to a particular action, and that depends upon the demands of the situation. Whether it needs the coordination of all the five, or one, or two, or three, or Only one, you see, that is decided by the demands of the situation, not by any entity here, any coordinator who is coordinating this. It will be a very difficult thing for you to function that way. So, frightening situation in the beginning, bewildering situation, they take over. So, it's not that religious, mystifying, mystical stuff or bliss, beatitude, or immensity, or, or any one of those things. But I don't see that. Why any religious slant should be placed on this, or interpret this, translate these things in any uh, mystical language? But this is a pure and simple physical, geological functioning of that the human that the nature has created, which is in form, which is one, which is not separate from the nature. So he lives where he sees, and then withers. That's the end. Anything you deserve of this is is worthless. It's like you see the the artificial perfumes we make, but it's not the same. It's because you you don't even know how this. By the time you capture this, you know this smells like that flower, this flower, that flower. So. Compartment, like this. Well, that's how it should be left alone. You see, some rare plant. You see, you wonder, admire, what is this, which we haven't seen, which cannot be put in, seen any any cage or any any list of 240 natural orders which you know of. This is something quite different. So you reject what is not compartment. Yes, finish. Not reject. You see, I mean, it has no relevance. It has no relevance to the way that human body is functioning. I am not anything that you are. Yeah. You yes. see, it is that uh, attainment, uh, that reaching that state. Is it not that uh, considered to be uh, the aim or suggestion given in the Upanishads that uh, that uh, reaching that state, and uh, that should be the ultimate desired end for every human being? Yes, but if the whole human race. Is like that. It would be a horrible place to live, <laughs> and that is first of all a thing that will never have. It can't. It can't in the very nature of things. Have. <clears throat> But you see, you know, it is mind that that you, that that is true. But if they don't emphasize one thing, which I am emphasizing all the time, is that the very desire for that must go. Even a desire, even, even that, that, that must more go. so than all the other desires. That's the point, you know. That exactly. more so. That one, that desire has to burn itself out. But you are tackling with these petty little desires. I control this because that is the 
the one I must desire and not these things. So that when that goes, these have no importance at all. So because desire is life, you see, this is ridiculous to suppress desire. The desire is the desire is the expression of life. You know? So what is the point in suppressing these things, controlling these things, practicing some silly non-desires uh, in the hope of getting that. You see, that has to go, that has to be non-desires. <laughs> Master desire. That, that one has to go. I don't know. That's it, my piece. This, uh, sir, finish this, or you can have it. Yes, yes, by all means, sir. But I have that suggested that he should, you see, include all the other yes. uh, glands also. Right. So only the thymus, sir. He is to emphasize, you see, uh, only that one. So, you see, now there is a tremendous interest in the thymus gland yes. in America. Oh. I, oh my God, so many books have been published. So, next time when I am there in California, some people have expressed a desire to meet me. And I, have, I, I don't think I can contribute much in in what they are interested in, but uh, I hinted this long time ago, but you see, the, the, the no, developmentally dormant cells must be there, must be there. You see, the whole of your being is involved. <laughs> I am here I until have always you know, wanted I am here until the institution. I very arrogantly said that I am not ready yet for that. <laughs> no, but, but you don't have to desire strongly not to go, is No harm. No, I visited some of those, uh, the, the pineal gland, you see, and then pituitary gland. You see, if you two don't do something about the pituitary gland, you see, they're, they're all interested in treating them as ailments. You have to do it, otherwise you grow taller than the tallest trees, you know that, you see. So, but you have to do something to control that tree, you see. The anomalous situation created by some disorder in the metabolism of the body. See, what is the point I can understand? That you see, by these studies, one would never, or one would may, would may never understand that attainment. But there will be another advantage of studying and understanding the ordinaries. Because ordinaries help ordinaries and we most of the people are ordinary. Certainly. And even in the ordinaries there are stupidities and less stupidities and more yes, stupidities. Yes, yes. So this in is that, of many yeah, in that framework, so everything is valid. You see, I am, you see, if you, you see, I am rejecting psyche. So, you see, the psyche is a reality. You can't deny that. You see, you see to me, I have discovered that it doesn't exist, the self doesn't exist. So the whole search for, you see, or the demand for self-realization is a meaningless thing for me. See, but the self is a reality, the I is a reality there. So you are interested in, you see, improving the situation, adding something, changing it, modifying it. Do cosmetics. <laughs> cosmetics. Within the that framework, yes. See, but there's nothing that I can contribute there except to uh, to describe the way I am functioning, which may or may not have any relevance. So making statements like this, that you see it is there, that the whole thing is felt. I answered that originally uh, in such terms because people talk now of the real Hrudaya, the real heart, like Ramana Maharshi, and then there is no real heart there other than you see the physical heart. The physical heart registers only the emotions, the anxieties, the worries and all that kind of thing.